We agree with Sheikh Yasser Qadi when he says Muhammad married a little girl and Muslims shouldn't lie about it. The early Islamic sources prove it. Come and see. Last time we talked about the problem of the marriage of an old man, Muhammad, to a young uh, girl who was basically nine years old, according to Islamic sources, when the marriage was consummated. So with that in mind, we're going to ask the question today, was Aisha really nine years old? David, what say you? Uh, I say yes. And uh, I say yes, she was nine years old because that is the uniform testimony of Islam's most trusted sources. There is a reference in Ibn Hisham who says that, that she was 10, but that's a source that Muslims tell us not to trust. And so when you go to the sources that they do tell us to trust, they tell us to trust Sahih al-Bukhari, right. they tell us to trust uh, Sahih Muslim, they tell us to trust Sunan Abu Dawood and Sunan an Nasai and so on. And these sources say over and over and over again that she was nine years old when Muhammad consummated the marriage with her. So that's when um, Muhammad actually had sex with Aisha. Um, you do see some difference. You do see some difference between six or seven when uh, the marriage contract was written or when they were actually when they were actually married. But uh, when it says that Muhammad consummated the marriage, uh, across the board, they say she was nine years old. And uh, some have pointed out that there's not really a conflict between six or seven if they're like arranging the, the marriage and so on on, you know, as she's going from six to seven and it starts at one point and continues to until she's seven. Um, uh, but I also we also know from experience sometimes sometimes you might not remember the difference between when you were six or seven. There are things I can remember where I don't, you know, I'm thinking, was I six then or was I seven then? Uh, and where we're really clear, where we're really clear is when we have some reference point. Like I remember I was six years old and my dad was in the military, had gotten into the military and I ended up taking a trip when I was six years old. So anything that happened on that trip, I remember I was, I was six years old. Uh, apart from that, you know, like I had a dog died. I don't remember if I was five or six mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. or what the situation was. And so we can understand why there would be, you know, an issue between, six or seven or something like that. Uh, it seems that Aisha did have a reference point. This wasn't long after the migration to Medina. So she seems to have been very clear on uh, the fact that this was when she was nine years old. Um, but what we find is lots of Muslims insist that Aisha was older. They'll say she was 16 or 18 or 19. They'll tell us that, uh, a, the one just dropped off of the number somehow. Does that work in Arabic? Like, a, you know, the, the, the one in 19 just fell off. And uh, they're using oopsie. like the scribal argument now uh, in the Old Testament, New Testament. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's got to be something like that, right? <laughs> um, but uh, notice, notice, if you wanted to dispute between six and seven, okay, that, that, that makes some sense. There is nothing in my life that I would confuse from between when I was nine and when I was 19. The, 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 there's a there's a very big difference between nine and nineteen right. in my life, so there's no way I'm going to be confused about that. So when we look to the Muslim sources and we see over and over and over again that Aisha was nine years old, and we never see anything saying that she was eighteen or nineteen or anything like that, uh, the only reason to say she's older is to just not want to believe that Muhammad. Uh, had sex with a, a nine-year-old girl. Right. So we're going to go ahead and, and read a few of the Muslim sources to see what we're talking about here, just for people who've never uh, read them before. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and read Sahih al-Bukhari. And Sahih al-Bukhari, we read this in our first video. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you have the chapter introduction there, which is giving one's young children in marriage is permissible. So it's clear what this is talking about. This is talking about uh, marrying young children. I mean, their words, not ours, young children. Uh, and so we read Sahih al-Bukhari 5133, narrated Aisha that the prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. So there you have a, a little timeline, six years old, 
then she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years. So this is Bukhari. We'll read one more from Sahih al-Bukhari, just because that's their favorite source. This is number 5158. Narrated Urwa, the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha while she was six years old and consummated his marriage with her while she was nine years old, and she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. So th those are both in Sahih al-Bukhari, and there are more in Sahih al-Bukhari, but let's go on to Sahih Muslim. So this is from Sahih Muslim, number 3311. Aisha reported that Allah's apostle married her when she was seven years old, and he was, uh, so she, that's a typo, and she was taken to his house as a bride when she was nine, and her dolls were with her. And when he, the Holy Prophet, died, she was 18 years old. So now we have even more of a timeline. We've right. got she was six, and then she was nine, and then she stayed with him for nine years, and she was 18. So they can't be more clear. That's right. You cannot tell me the 19, the one dropped. Uh, well, she, he died when she was 18. Mm -hmm. So where is the 19 coming from? Yeah, so... Um, it's pretty clear what the Muslim sources are saying. It's pretty clear what the what the early companions of Muhammad and Aisha herself are mm -hmm. saying. They're saying that she was uh, nine years old when Muhammad had sex with her. All right, so that's Sahih Muslim. Now let's go on to Sunan Abu Daud. So this is Sunan Abu Daud, number 2116 or number 2121, depending on uh, which edition you're using. Narrated Aisha, the Messenger of Allah married me when I was seven years old, the narrator Suleiman said, or six years. He had intercourse with me when I was nine years old. So it doesn't matter where we go, we see the same thing. And let's go ahead and read one more. So this is Sunan An Nasai, number 3380. It was narrated that Aisha said, the Messenger of Allah married me when I was six and consummated the marriage with me when I was nine, and I used to play with dolls. So the Muslim sources really can't make it any clearer. And by the way, I, I, all I did was pick a couple of examples there from their most trusted sources. In, in these sources, there are more references. There are more references in Bukhari. There are more references in Muslim. There are more references in Abu Dawud. There are more references in, in an Nasai about Aisha being nine years old. That was just a, a, a sampling. I do want to give a sort of summary statement from Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir is certainly one of the greatest, most respected Muslim scholars of all time. And he's a Salafi, and he's the a student of Ibn Taymiyyah. And in his, he wrote a four-volume biography of Muhammad. So he wrote, he wrote his own sirah. And he gives a, an interesting summary when he's talking about this issue. Um, so in his, in his four-volume biography, Ibn Kathir quotes Urwa ibn al-Zubair, so that's Aisha's nephew, who says that Aisha was nine years old when Muhammad consummated his marriage with her. Then, after quoting Urwa, on the age of Aisha, so quote, he quotes Urwa saying that Aisha was nine. That's Aisha's nephew who said it. After quoting Urwa, Ibn Kathir says this. His statement, he contracted marriage with Aisha when she was six, thereafter consummating marriage with her when she was nine, is not disputed by anyone and is well established in the Sahih collections of traditions and elsewhere. So this is Ibn Kathir, yeah. one of the greatest Muslim scholars of all time. Yeah. Yeah, and I was going to say, I mean, Ibn Kathir confirming something that happened at the in the seventh century because he was in the thirteenth century. Look at the time span, and he's still affirming the same thing that you just shared. And he's affirming. And so what Ibn Kathir would do is is when there was dispute on an issue, he would say, Ah, but this scholar says this, and this scholar right. says that, and this That's companion right. says this, and this companion says that. And here he's just saying there's no dispute. Right. on this issue. And so when Muslims today dispute the age of Aisha, we need to be clear on the fact that, hey, this is a modern, you rejecting this is a modern uh, idea. It doesn't go back to your Muslim scholars. And fortunately, there are, there are Muslim scholars who try to be honest about this, at least. And so let me read a quotation from uh, a, a talk from uh, Sheikh Yasser Qadi. 
So shake Yasser Kadi. Let's take a deep dive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> deep dive, holes in the narrative, right? Uh, does not like me, <laughs> said some very nasty things about me. But on this issue, we'll give credit where credit is due. He did, he did speak honestly about this. And he said to Muslims who want to uh, misrepresent the age of Aisha in order to, uh, to keep people from criticizing Muhammad, he said, oh, Muslims, don't apologize for the truth and don't distort the truth. There are Muslims that tried to deny this. Oh, he didn't marry Aisha as a young girl. Yaki, look, that's not the way forward. We don't lie for the sake of our religion. Astaghfirullah. We have the truth. We are not going to cover up the truth if people find it embarrassing. This is the reality. Deal with it. Our prophet married a young girl and it was fine for the time. So this is yeah, Sheikh Yasser yeah, Qadi. Yeah. And notice he says, don't lie for the truth. Exactly. He's calling other Muslims who say, no, she was 18, she was 19. He's calling them liars. Yeah. And, and Yasser Qadi himself did a lecture one time about the marriage of Muhammad to the uh, wife uh, Zainab, the wife of his adopted son. And he used the same language. He's like, why do we have to hide it? He's a human being. Yes, he lost it after her. So what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Uh, I mean, fortunately, we, we, we have some, some examples of, of honesty like this. But I mean, think about this. All across the Muslim sources, she was nine years old. Ibn Kathir says, down to his, no one disputes this. Down to his time, no one's disputing this. No scholars dispute this. Um, suddenly, we get to the, our modern age, and Muslims realize that it's wrong. So Muhammad couldn't have done that. So they want to start saying that she must have been older. And then Muslim scholars who don't want Muslims to leave Islam over this issue, start telling them, oh yes, she was older, she was 18, maybe she was 19. They start telling Muslims that in order to uh, keep them from leaving Islam. And then you've got people like Sheikh Yasser Qadi saying, guys, we can't be, you can't be lying to keep people in Islam. We right. can't lie to keep right. people in Islam. So anyway, the point is, any honest look at the evidence, uh, we have a ton of evidence that she was nine years old. We have no evidence that she was that she was older. And so very clear, Muslims, I agree with, on this at least, I agree with Sheikh Yasser Qadi. Stop lying. Stop lying and saying that she was older than nine. Fascinating. Thank you so much, David. And uh, hopefully everyone is enjoying uh, these, uh, you know, subtopics under this big umbrella about Aisha and Muhammad. As you can see, this is a worthy topic to be mentioned simply because sometimes Muslims either are repeating what they were told or they don't even know about the rest of the story when it comes to that. And I guarantee you some even haven't even heard the story before. And I know of examples of this as well. So whatever the case might be, we're giving you tools here not to go and beat up Muslims with it, but the idea is to, if it is worthy to be discussed, use it wisely. We have given you already the Islamic resources and the sources that you could quote and could also refer your Muslim friends to it. And if you are a Muslim watching this, we hope that you are benefiting a great deal from the fact that we are sharing with you something that you should be disturbed about, just like the rest of us. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. This is Al Fadi. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sira International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.